Good evening, Dr. Marmelo and good evening, classmates. My apology if this will be recorded, reporting as I have conflict with my work schedule tonight. I'm Christine Bianca Pinkwizon and I'll be reporting the rest of the topic about going online. Following topics are choosing a web host server and plan, web management team, and search engine optimization. Let's go first with choosing a web host server and plan. First, what is web hosting? Web host provides a place for you to store all your website's essential files and data. Plus, it takes care of delivering that data to the people who visit your site through their browsers. The information stored might include images, videos, hypertext markup language with HTML files, and even cascading style sheets with the CSS that tell your site's theme how to behave. So without a web host, in other words, your website would not be connected to the rest of the internet. Why do we need web hosts? Aside from launching your website, it also gives significant impact on your search engine optimization or the CE, SEO. SEO is a collection of strategies and techniques aimed at helping your pages rank higher in search engine results. It also helps to increase your site's visibility. Later on, we'll discuss more about SEO. Now, in this slide, there are nine factors on how are we going to choose a web host server on our site. First is to understand the need of your site. Ask yourself questions such as what type of website am I building? What do I want to use WordPress or how much traffic am I expecting? These questions might seem basic but are actually important because the more detailed you can be, the easier it will be for deciding which hosting provider will be right for the job. Second is look at server reliability or their uptime scores. Staying online is very important for your website, and in order to do that, you need to look at how stable your web host provider is. There are plenty of server monitoring tools that you can use to track a web host, but generally, a look at your uptime scores is more than enough to tell whether a web host is stable or not. Example here is, when Amazon went down for 30 minutes in 2013, it cost them $66,240 per minute in revenue. So suffice to say, staying online is very important for your website and in order to do that, you need to look at how stable your web host provider is. Third, the ability to upgrade your server. A hosting provider that allows you to upgrade your plan will be a lot more useful than having to find a new host and migrating your entire website. It is recommended that you choose a provider that allows you to upgrade your server down the road. Fourth, research the sign-up and renewal price. In most cases, what you pay initially for a plan might not be what you pay when you renew. More often than not, the renewal price will be significantly higher depending on how much offer or discounts you are given. A quick note here is try to go for web host that are reasonable with their price jumps. For example, if the sign-up cost was $5 per month, then it should not go about $10 per month when you're getting new. If do they have a refund policy or free trial? Hosting company that offers some form of refund policy or free trial period can greatly help reduce your costs. With free trials, you can safely test out the hosting plan and opt out if it doesn't fit your website's needs. There are some that charge a cancellation fee when you cancel your account during their trial periods. So best advice is to avoid these providers. Instead, go for companies that offer money back guarantees with prorated refunds after your trial period is over. It's over. Next is, do they have the essential features? Always check if they offer other essential features such as one-click installer, file manager, and DNS management. 
One-click installer is a great tool to help you install applica applications such as WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, and etc. in an easy manner. This is especially useful if you're not good with the technical aspect of web creation. The next one is the file manager. It enables you to administrate your web spaces files directly in your browser easily. You can use File Manager to administrate tasks such as uploading, downloading, renaming, and moving files. And then the last one is the Domain Name System or the DNS. It is a naming database in which internet domain names are located and translated into internet protocol or the IP addresses. Seventh is having backups for your site. Backups are essential for a website. Even with all the security measures in the world, your website will face some kind of crash, failures, virus, or hack that will take your website down or burst. That's where a good backup policy comes in handy because you can always revert back to a working website should an accident happen. A good web host provider should be able to restore your full site with very minimal downtime to avoid any significant losses. Eight is the quality of customer support or the live chat or telephone. There will be times when you're faced with a server issue that you just can't solve by yourself. Now this is where a good customer support team will be essential. Ideally, you would want to settle with a hosting provider that gives you good and responsive support, either via live chat or telephone. That way, you can immediately resolve your website issues. Research on a hosting provider support in your views, either in social media platforms such as Facebook or on forums to get a better idea of the quality of their support team. And then the last one is quick server responsiveness and speed. It's clear that having a fast loading page is important for your website and business. It's recommended that you go for hosting providers that can offer you a stable and fast server speed to ensure that your website loads fast and smoothly. This will not only improve the overall user experience, but will also help your SEO ranking as well. Now we'll go to uh, web management team. There are seven essential roles in a web management team. Namely, the project manager, analyst, back-end developer, front-end developer, architect, graphic designer, the UX designer, and then the quality tester. First is the project manager. The digital project manager provides focus for the team on their various projects, and they help to keep it moving along on schedule. They manage the budget take care of planning, and ensure the team is staffed with the best talent. Second one is the analyst. This role is designed to be a proxy between the client, design, and development. He translates the request or the requirements made by the client into clear specification on how a certain functionality should behave. Functional analysts will also test these functionalities once the team has delivered them. Now, the back-end developer and the front-end developer. Back-end back developer, this programmer writes code that controls what's displayed on a website. The back-end developer uses programming languages like Java, .NET, and PHP. These languages run on the server to create the web page. That's why we call it server-side or back-end. When someone visits the website, the browser will fetch the page from the server. On the other hand, the front-end developer is the one that works closely with his back-end colleague. The front-end developer takes care of the front-end or client side. Once the page is shown in the browser, it still requires layout look nice. In order to do this, the developer writes CSS and HTML to tell the browser how to visually display the page. One is the architect. This person configures the infrastructure or the hardware on which the website are running. In contrast with the back-end developer, the architect doesn't work on the website itself but on everything that's required to have one. They are in charge of creating an ideal environment 
for the website. Next is the UX designer and the graphic designer. This person creates a visual style for the website aligned with the corporate style guide. He also creates a visual design for each functionality as a guideline for the front-end developer who will recreate this design by code. Then, the last one is the quality tester. This person tests every functionality that the team has made in every possible condition before the website becomes available to regular users. When something is not in order, he reports a bug to the developers. The tester does not simply click around in the application but follows a strict plan and procedure to make sure that to make sure they will test every possibility. And here we'll talk about the search engine optimization. The search engine optimization or the SEO is a process of improving the quality and quantity of website traffic to a website or a web page from search engines. SEO is a collection of strategies and techniques aimed at helping your agents rank higher in search engine results. It also helps to increase your site's visibility. So as an internet marketing strategy, SEO considers how search engine works. The computer program algorithms that dictate search engine behavior or what people search for or the actual search terms or keywords typed into search engines and which search engines are preferred by their targeted audience. These visitors can then potentially be converted into customers. Is SEO or the search engine optimization good for website? Today, SEO is an essential part of any marketing strategy. So to answer the question, the simplest explanation is that it's the best way to improve your online visibility and enrich consumers as they actively search for information. Below are the top search engine optimization in the Philippines. And below are my preferences. Thank you for listening, Dr. Marmelo and classmates. Have a good evening.